Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I have a little bit of sad news. I thought that I had escaped from this problem, but apparently I have not, and it has to do with in-game assets. Um, as some of you know, I've been running dual screen so that I can use the strategic zoom on my left-hand screen to crop it down to make that cool little mini-map that's usually right over here in the corner. Well, on this replay, I tried three times. All three times, I got to about four and a half minutes, and I experienced a driver crash on my graphics card. And uh, after one of the times, I actually went and reinstalled the drivers and I have not had any updates or anything, so apparently there is something about this replay that kills my graphics card driver. So I've had to disable the uh, second display for this one. Hopefully we can enjoy it nonetheless. I'm sure that a lot of you do like that minimap, but I think we can get, a, get along without it for one game. So I know what happens for the first four and a half minutes of this game, but after that it is a mystery to me, and I hope you will join me as we find out what takes place. Now, the map, I'm sure I don't have to introduce. It is Wonder. You've all played on it. You've all seen it. It is probably the third most played map in FAF, and uh, that would be after Sentence and Gap, I think. It may be played as much as Gap. I'm not 100% sure. But this game runs the gambit all the way from one rank range to the other. We've got 1100 for the lowest and 2100 for the highest. That is a 1K spread, but, uh, you know, it's kind of impossible to get a balance at that point. But these guys did try. Let's go ahead and introduce everybody right after uh, we notice the awesomely named scouts here. We've got Secret Invisible Agent, a Selen pushing over to the left side, and then we've got uh, Secret Agent, and then Bob and Mike. Well, he hasn't been named Mike yet. There he is, Mike. You can tell that I've watched the first couple of minutes of this cast, and I found those scouts tremendously hilarious. I always love it when players take the time to randomly rename their units instead of getting manual reclaim, because of course that's how your time should be prioritized. Why are you doing anything productive in a game? You're supposed to have fun. Yellow ACU pushing up and killing off the Engineer and claiming the Omni. And before we get any further into this madness, let's go ahead and introduce the guys. And uh, yeah, there's not really anything that happens in the next 35 seconds or so. We've got JMD and Westmania taking Cyber. And then we've got Seraphim for OK Puck on the northern side. And then on the south, we have Seraphim and UEF for that is Magan and Momo. And then on the Southern team, we have the Cool Gamer, Robert C, and Exotic Retard all taking UEF on the south side. And then we've got Takedo taking Seraphim, which is very, very strange. I don't think I've ever seen him take Seraphim before or anything other than Cybern for that matter. He is a hardcore Cybern player. And then on the Southern air slot, we have Speed taking Aeon, and I can tell you that this is probably going to be a bad idea balance-wise because anytime Speed or Bloodier gets in the rear slot, they tend to end up being last man standing, and it ends badly for the other team. Maybe it happens this game, maybe it doesn't, I've got no idea. But that is my observation. If you're ever in a wonder and Speed or Bloodier's in the other air slot, you might as well count it a loss and take a bow. All right, setting up for land spam. We've got five land factories going down up here, six for the Cybern front player. Then we've got two for UEF and four going down for Seraphim down here. On the right-hand side, we've got four total going down, three plus an air factory. And some people would say, well, why do you need an air factory if you have a dedicated air player? And to that, I say Kamikaze Tech 1 Bombers. They are the ultimate win and incredibly frustrating to deal with, so you can aggravate the ever-living snot out of the other team, and hopefully they will all rage quit. Uh, well, okay, man, that might be too much to hope for, but you can dream. And then Exotic Retards throwing down four factories, Takedo throwing down three, and um, immediately going after the Tech 2 upgrade right there. That is Tech 2 and a Tech 2 upgrade for Exotic Retard as well. And this is about the point where I don't know what happens because, yeah, this is after where my drivers kept crashing. Alrighty then. Looking into the new territory. 
We've got an interesting thing happening on the northern side. We've got five land factories going down for JMD, and he's pushing his ACU to front. And this is actually starting to look like a multi-ACU push. Let's see, we've got... Uh, was that an upgrade I just saw? I think that was an upgrade. Let's see, that is uh, West Mania, who is purple. And yes, that's a gun upgrade. Then, okay, Puck is also under upgrade, which is gun. And this ACU is pushing to the right. So I think what we're about to see here is a triple ACU push onto the head of poor little cool gamer who is currently getting an upgrade and has the drone. Why does he have the drone? I don't know why he has the drone. Apparently he feels like staying in a perpetual state of power stall as he rebuilds that drone over and over again as it's killed by interceptors in Tech 1 mobile anti-air. I don't know why people would do that to themselves in game, but apparently that is what makes him happy. Alright, gun upgrade almost done over here, heavily assisted, and we've already got a push coming in from Westmania. And there is a terrifying amount of Tech 1 spam there. I really sincerely doubt that Cool Gamer is going to survive this. I just don't see it happening. There's too much headed his way. Robert is putting an upgrade on his ACU. That is also a gun upgrade, but it is going very, very slowly, and he is not assisting it. And Hero... Yes, Ilshiva, 10 kills on that thing, picking up a veteran. See, Cool Gamer backtracking as fast as he possibly can. 11, 12, and artillery shot to the face. Finally, that Ilshiva goes down. Cool Gamer is six, five kills away from a veteran. See, maybe he will pull out of it. He is actually putting a decent amount of distance between himself and Westmania, but Westmania does have the advantage of range with the gun upgrade, so he is still going to be able to pound away at the Cool Gamer from a safe distance, not taking any damage himself. However, he is in a group of units. Perhaps his pathfinding will get screwed up. 1,700 health, 1,400 health, rapidly dropping. 13 Westmania diverted by his own units. Question is, ah, there's the veteran, see? Can he vet fast enough to survive this onslaught? And I kind of tend to think not because he does not have any power storage. He's trying to build it, doesn't have overcharge, 900 health, and falling rapidly. Seven, got another hero over here, four, trying to push in with those Uthathas. He really is. 400 health again. 10 kills to a veteran, see, but I don't think he's going to survive it. Oh, 31 kills, 40 three but he's dead so sad to see all right now the northern team needs to worry about mercies because speed has a tech 2 air factory you've got eight kills on this ilshiva so many kills on those two ilshivas that's really cool it's like a gladiator stepping into war running towards the back under artillery fire maybe he will make it maybe he will not jmd building tech 1 anti-air and now Robert C is in a tough spot between the Tech 1 point defense and the artillery that Ilshiva is finally going to go down. Robert C under fire from all of these Tech 1 units. The Tech 1 from Exotic Retard was drastically misplaced, not going in to directly help the ACU. And I think he, we can safely say that he's dead. 900 health under fire from a Guncom and Cub. Oh, nope, there was a Veteran C. <laughs> I was waiting for the nuke to go. There it goes. He is dead. Jam. Oh, what? What now? Uh, that really looked like a control K. I didn't see anything hit his commander. No attack missiles. No mercies. There's a single mercy that just got built down here. I really hope he didn't control K. I will rewatch the beginning of this, guys. If it was not a control K, I will post a fast action replay of what actually killed him if you don't see anything down there in the corner. Uh, yeah, he control K. Don't know why. West Mania retreating rapidly, and Exotic Retard also retreating towards his base. He's got three triads in the back, but there is a tremendous amount of spam headed his way. I don't know if he will be able to clear it, losing his Tech 2 Engineer and both his Tech 2 Engineers before that other uh, point defense came online. He did have a pillar coming to the front to help him, but unfortunately it did get wiped out. Tech 1 point defense going down, Triads heroically pounding away at the advancing onslaught. 
but between the overcharges and guns of two different commanders, Exotic Retard is going to go down. So we're now two versus four, and I spy Mercies on the move. There is Tech One Anti-Air. Those Mercies can be denied, but West Mania is rapidly leaving them behind. I see a sh sudden and violent death in his future. 3,000 health will more than be killed off by two mercies, and boom, there he goes. Speed has been happily teching up in the back and building wall segments. He has a lot of walls, which are actually kind of amazing versus Tech 1. It looks like he does have range on his commander, and he's throwing down the world's fastest Tech 3 upgrade while he's doing it. He's pulling 75 mass per tick income He's got all Tech 2 Mass Extractors, most of them capped, and he will shortly have access to a lot of Reclaim. This is about to get dangerous. Building a Harbinger to help out with Tech 1 spam, and rapidly overcharging these Tech 1 units as much as he can. They are nicely, beautifully clumped there. Oh, that would have been a nasty overcharge, but unfortunately he didn't get it in. He could have killed all of those units with a single overcharge had he launched it. There's the overcharge and the tank escaped. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. He could have had like 10 kills in a single overcharge there, but overcharge on the wrong people. Takedo is not looking extremely good right now. Uh, he's got an upgrade going down under heavy assistance. I would imagine that that is probably that is gun. That is the gun upgrade. So he is going to be able to slaughter the incoming Tech 1, and he has a lot of Ilshivas on the field which are rapidly getting punched through with these Tech 2 point defenses. So this is going to be a hairy situation. He is also throwing down a Tech 3 upgrade under heavy assistance, which I think was very ill-advised at this point because he already has a bunch of units approaching him. And uh, when you take the time out of production to throw an upgrade on your factory it tends to get a bit messy because you will get overrun in the interim um tech one units retreating we got an upgrade going down on ok puck who is ridiculously exposed although he does have a tech one anti-air and he's building radar so i think he's relatively mercy proof got tack launchers here nice move for momo that is something that you want to do because then you can potentially kill off the air players um, eco but I am seeing a lot of tack defense going down very quickly so I don't think that is going to be the case hero harbinger running out to the front to try to take care of some of these thams doing its best to kite backwards it's down to about two-thirds shield health and rapidly eliminating tech one tanks a lot of misses on those shots actually just as I was commenting on that and something you do not see every day there are Absolvers right over there. I'm going to take a peek over here at Takedo. He is just about to finish that Tech 3 upgrade. Hopefully he can get some awful Othams out before it is too late. And I was about to say I'm expecting T3 artillery, but Speed proved me wrong preemptively. He is building Sniper Rots, which I'm sure will be targeted on this shield generator along with these Absolvers. Absolvers are a vastly underutilized tool in the Aeon Forces back pocket. It does monstrous amounts of damage to shielding and it can pretty much make mincemeat of any fire base that's heavily protected by this kind of setup. Tack launch at Takedo, but well that may be the T3 HQ. His ACU is constantly on the move so I cannot imagine why you would try to snipe him like that but you know to each his own sometimes people try just for the sake of trying got two sniper bots on the front now they are going to start laying fire down on that fire base yes the attack launch was for the acu it is going to take out a bunch of wall segments that was a waste momo achillo gonna run for the hills because he lost his shield and the sniper bots are now going to be able to pound away on those attack launchers or anything else they wish really just depends on what he wants to target got a lot of mercies headed out and tax still launching away acu moving around a bit got an awesome moving towards the back not sure that this is going to end well though uh, down to 10k health multiple veterancy on that commander but this point defense creep is a nasty one those mercies are just going to keep chilling. There is anti-air all around here. 
Although at this moment, I think the ACU is actually exposed enough to Mercy. And as soon as I start commenting on that, of course, he runs back towards his anti-air. Swift winds moving in, probably to do a bit of scouting and try to potentially clear the air out, but they are going to stop. Takedo is getting himself surrounded. He's got a very strong gun column with a lot of veterancy, and he has a mobile shield, and he has Othams, but I don't think he has enough to survive. He is very exposed. He's losing his build power, losing his mass income, and just gradually slipping further and further into the abyss of mediocrity. And I think it is about time that he should probably be running back towards the safety of this base. He is very low on health at the moment, completely surrounded by units, and in comes the Tech 2 Bomber Notha going to land a blow to the head, and down goes the Commander. So speed is all by his little lonesome, but I think he's actually found his happy place because he is joyfully sucking up mass right out here in the center and turning that mass into beautiful, beautiful attack units. Still building Tech 3. That is more Harbingers on the way. He's building Tech 2 Air because he does not have Ras yet. Still surviving on Tech 2 Power, throwing down another gen. He's only pulling in 2.2k, which is actually a very tiny amount considering the mass that he is pulling in. I'm surprised he's able to burn off all of the reclaim. Let's take a check on his eco. And he's actually balanced quite nicely. Very well done. Momo Uchila is about to surpass him in income, though. And probably a lot of that is due to reclaim because he does have a lot of land factories down and he's done a lot of reclaiming speed is going to continue to tech up in the back though and this is a very dangerous situation because the northern team as you can see has a ridiculous advantage enough of an advantage that my voice is breaking in the horror of it but they are leaving a very high ranked very skilled player all alone in the base back here and he is free to do pretty much whatever the hell he wants and uh, that can get very hairy in a hurry tech one tanks in the base casually pummeling that mass storage i know that mass storage is vital to speed's ultimate plan so he must defend it hopefully he will not take too much of a loss on it and now retarget it to the mass extractor where it should have been all along. Harbingers gradually starting to spread out. And uh, Harbingers are an awesome early game tool, but uh, unfortunately, as the game progresses, yes, obliterate the face off those mercies with that anti-air. Unfortunately, as the game progresses, Harbingers get weaker and weaker relative to the other units due to their short range and relatively low health statistics. I know they do have a shield, but still they don't. They are not as hardy as a Percival or a Brick. They are fast though. They're good early T3 units and hopefully speed will be able to use them to their greatest potential in order to cripple some of this expansion going on on the northern side. It is a two versus one game at, oh no, three. There are, we've got mud brown and then we've got brown orange. So that's kind of confusing. Oh well. So three versus one. Tech two gunships coming in to clear out all of this stuff over here. Need some mobile flak. Mobile flak would be a wonderful thing to have at this point. Tech two gunships gonna swing all the way around the outside and start obliterating mass ext mass extractors. I'm gonna move up to the northern side here. And quite an impressive amount of tech one power generator spam. We've got all this tech one power over here for Momo, and all of this for OK Puck. Tech 2 gunship going to go down, not building any flak still. Going to lose a substantial amount of eco potential over there. Maybe he will be able to get something out to defend himself relatively quickly. If he does not, that is going to be a bad situation. Got a Tech 3 air factory here, but the build power is getting killed off very rapidly. And I think those five Harbingers are going to have a field day in the back of this base. They all have full health and full shields, some of them with veterancy, and they are rapidly pounding away at this, this uh, base over here. T3 HQ is down for the air, so no more Tech 3 air for the Northern team, unless one of these guys has it. Nope, they do not. And now the... Uh, no, I almost said Percy's. Now the Harbingers are moving over to the left. 
I would love to see them rip through this power spam. That would just be fun to watch. Lots and lots of pretty explosions. It would be like a mini Michael Bay movie. We got more Harveys moving in over... I would love to see them take this out. Lots of awesome stuff over there. And I do believe that that was a group of overcharges from Momo. I zoomed away, and then I zoomed back, and the Harbingers were gone. I think that is the wreck. Yeah, that is a Harbinger wreck right there. So, yes, overcharges. Taking the head off of units since the release of this game. What was the old, uh, the D-Gun, I think, in Total Annihilation? I never played. I have actually never played Total Annihilation, believe it or not. <laughs> I, that is probably some sort of sacrilege, but I never did. So, I only know hearsay. Power generators going down. Harbinger standing in really bad positions, almost dying to all of that uh, area of effect damage from those exploding base units. And they are going to survive, though. Magan coming in. Hopefully he can land an overcharge. There is one death, and those Harveys are still moving around the side. Gunships are still alive. Mobile Flak finally responding from Momo. It took long enough, I'm telling you. And... Uh, that that's kind of astounding. I am amazed that those gunships were able to kill off that much. And this Harbinger in the back here, still happily plugging away at all these Tech One power generators. It has 38 kills under its belt so far, and still ticking upwards. And still Tech Two gunships alive in the back here. Five kills on that one, and seven kills on that one. Quite impressive. And here comes the Percival. Bearing down on this Harbinger. The only way you're going to survive with a Harbinger is if you're able to actually micro around the shots. I've never tried it before. Maybe one Harbinger can kill one Percival with perfect micro because Harbingers are pretty dang fast. But I would still be nervous about trying it. Alright, we've got T3 on the field. That means the Percival advantage is about to come into effect. The only chance that the Northern team... Oh, Harbinger drops. That's not going to be fun. The only chance that the Northern team has is to spam the ever-living daylights out of Percival's as quickly as they can and hopefully get a couple of T4s online to defend and then work out some form of snipe. And that is the best place lightning tank ever. That thing was able to kill off that transport before it dropped the Harbingers and saved a lot of grief in the back of this base here. Harbinger's moving up the center, though. Once again, vetting up. We got 15 kills, 15 kills, 6 kills, and 6 kills. So, yeah. As soon as you deal with one problem, another one steps foot into your base. Let's take a peek at speed down here and see what he is up to. We've got a whole lot of teching going on. We've got a lot of land factories that are tech 3. Actually, we've got 3 of them, and... This one is the only one producing. Not producing out of these anymore, for some reason. Probably teching up. And where, I'm not sure. But he does have RAS on his ACU now, so he's free to produce T3 air if he so wishes. And he does have the factory, but he apparently does not wish because he's not doing it. And his ego is beautifully balanced, just like it always is. I'm sure he's about to start a T3 because of the location of that build power. Or a T4, my bad. But we do have another drop coming around the back on this side, and then a full frontal assault from the Harbingers over here. And that Harbinger is going to die a terrible death that gets within reach of those Othams. Othams, among their many weaknesses, is their slowness. Um, They're not able to overtake a Harbinger, and they don't have any kind of real range advantage. So all in all, they pretty much just die to everything. But here come the Percivals. Maybe, no, maybe, no. We're going to do a significant amount of damage, but the uh, mass balance is way too far in favor of speed for that tiny amount of Percivals to actually succeed in the undertaking of eliminating the Harbinger threat. Harbinger's ripping through the back end of this base, already pulling, we got five and nine kills, um, killing off a couple of mass extractors already, tech three mass extractors at that, that is a hard loss to take. Autumn's going to move in, and I think they're actually going to catch the Harbingers this time. Hopefully, they will be able to kill them, even though they have veterancy, and yeah, they'll be fine. 
There goes the heavy damage and health rapidly depleting on that other one. Two Harbingers up here and a whole bunch more Harbingers over here and you can see speed dropping in to reclaim this section of the map and you can see how speed is systematically disassembling the northern team. This is beautiful gameplay. I would not say that it's necessarily epic gameplay because you don't have all the flashy T4s and crazy nukes and all kinds of stupid stuff. But if you ever want to see how to play a clean game, and you can see right here, the speed person sure knows how to play. This is how you execute a brilliant game. You go from a disadvantage, you poke and prod and wheedle your way into all of the weak areas, you systematically destroy their ecos, and then once you have the advantage in unit numbers, you push in, wipe everything out, and then reclaim what was there to add more units to your army and just proceed to take part in a march of death all across their ACUs. And that is about what we're seeing happen here. Now there's still a couple of strongholds. We have a lot of flak and a substantial amount of defenses over here. I think okay Puck is okay for now. And he is building a Athoth that is relatively close to the base here. That could potentially be damaging to speed. But I think Magan is about to be removed from the game. And at the moment he does have the strongest eco out of any of these guys and the most units by far so he is going to go down and that is going to hurt and hurt badly and then we've got harbingers moving in up here shroud bombers are still on the loose so i'm sure that momo is in danger right now momo building mass extractors when he should be building shields and sams that is a t3 uef commander so it does have the ability to build sams and i think he's about to die not think. I know he's about to die. He's not even going to try to dodge those. Strap Bomber's coming in. Rapidly depleting the health there. Oh, he actually is going to try. What do you know about that? Epic air crash right next to the ACU. You should turn around and walk the other way so you can walk away from the explosion. And boom. There you go. An explosion of your very own to keep. And the last guy standing on the northern team. Okay, Puck. Still trying to build his Yathatha with basically no income. Not even basically, he has no income. Two mass per tick. Probably because he's in a total power stall, because he does have more mass extractors than that. But no power generators at all anywhere. Down to 1 and 20. So Strap Bomber's incoming, taking his death by falling upon the Harbingers, and that is game. Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap this one up. Very interesting play. Not the most flashy thing you will ever see, but this is the epitome of excellent play. If you can take a strategy like this and copy it and execute it well, you will win a lot of games. This is why speed is a 2100 rank in the team game, uh, the team game category. He has the ability to find the weak spots, to exploit the weak spots, and then to run everybody over. Even though you saw the northern team had 100% of the north tied up with mostly Tech 2 Mexus, and then they had two positions on the southern side as well. So overwhelming mass advantage, tack bases, everything you could possibly want to eliminate one player, and they failed to do it. So brilliantly played by the Northern team in the early push and by speed in the late game overcoming overwhelming odds and nicely done to all parties. All right, with that, I am going to get out of here. Hopefully uh, the graphics card issue is not a permanent one. I desperately hope so because I do like that little mini map in the corner, but maybe I can get it back for you guys. And uh, with that, I am going to sign out. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and all your support. I will see you in the next one.